Chairman Ali Ahmeti, uh, dear Deputy Prime Minister Besimi, Ministers, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, <coughs> may I say dear friends, first of all I have to say many thanks uh, that I was invited to join you at this meeting. <coughs> I think it's extremely important not only for you but also for the region and also focusing on the general development uh, uh, which, we, which we have now. <coughs> I think a lot of things which are important for you have been already said by Minister Bishimi. Uh, I think I will focus on uh, some things which are on the one side general and on the other side very important uh, for the whole situation in the region and for Macedonia. First of all, and I have to say it quite straight, we are living amidst a tremendous change. It is a tremendous change because technology has developed uh, in a certain way uh, of great importance. With one result, we have to focus on the global situation. It's not any more regional, it's not any more continental, it is globally which is important. We have to be aware that we Europeans are only 7% of the population of the world we are still 20, 22, 25% uh, of the economic power. But this statistics is going down because China is coming up, India is coming up, Brazil is coming up, and other parts are coming up. So far, I think what we need in general, and every European country or citizen has to contribute on this, which role will Europe play in the future? I think we have to define what is the role of Europe. In the past, for centuries, we were convinced it is an Eurocentric world because we are so clever, we are so powerful, and so on and so on. But this has changed, and I think it is a normal development and not a catastrophe. Because if we are clever enough to define our role, it is a real chance. The difference to other parts of the world is that we have nearly no natural resources. No natural resources uh, by mining uh, and, and metals and so on and so on. Our natural resource is the brain, but we have to use it. Brain itself is not enough. I think if not using your brain, there's nothing. Uh, I think that's extremely important and this is a role which all the Europeans have to do together. It's a strong argument for more European cooperation. Sometimes there are discussions, I don't know if they are in Macedonia, but the parts of Europe I'm coming, uh, this globalization and so I'm against. Uh, we will hinder it. No, I think globalization is happening. That's one of the realities. Maybe nearly everybody of you have this instrument of globalization in your pocket. I think here you can phone with everybody here in the world uh, getting immediate contact and you are also influenced by this uh, very much because I think this connection by technology is of great importance. First argument. Second argument, so far Europe is also in a change. May I say, in the comparison looking to you, I'm one out of the elder generation. We grew up after the Second World War, my country became independent 10 years after the end of the Second World War, Austria, uh, and then we had the expectation that every year it will be a little bit better. It differs from your expectations. I think you had uh, the downfall of the Iron Curtain, the breaking into pieces of Yugoslavia and so on and so on, but then also the expectation that things will improve. And it needs for sure time, and I share your feeling it's not going quick enough which is quite understandable because the human being is always interested that everything should be quick. Uh, if we can see one problem, we want it to be solved in the next day or even in the next minute, and that's for sure not possible. Uh, it's going step by step. I think now the situation in Europe is changing. We are getting uh, different challenges. I may only say some of them. I think I did not expect, maybe you have been better informed, that we will get crisis like Russia-Ukraine. 
that we are getting wars which are able to change the borders. We had changes of the border by the downfall of Yugoslavia, uh, the separation of the Czechs and the Slovaks, and so on and so on. But here in the region there have been four wars for sure, but at the end of the day, we got some crisis management and the things were moving positively. I'm not quite sure that it is so. And then we have some developments like Islamic State or ISIS or whatever you want to say. We have this development uh, of uh, what's happening in the Mediterranean area, Libya. We have this development of Nigeria, of Mali, and so on and so on. And it has an impact on our situation. Nothing is any more far off on distance. I think it is quite close to us and it has an influence. And for example, we were taught by what has happened concerning Charlie Hebdo or in Copenhagen or whatever you mentioned, it's happening here, maybe on some distance, but it has an impact on our situation. And therefore, the first sentence which I'm asking you to keep in your mind, to register what is changing, to act and to react immediately, and to be aware of the situation. It's not anymore allowed to lean back or to take a nap and to sleep because everything is going quite quickly. It is a challenge. For sure, we can read in all the newspapers and getting the reports, crisis, banking crisis and uh, economic crisis, end end crisis, whatever you want, European crisis and so on and so on. I'm asking you to have the feeling that crisis is a chance. The argument for me, I learned the old Greek language. The word crisis is coming from krino, a Greek word. In translation, it means to judge and to decide. I think this is a chance. It is a challenge to us to judge what is the situation and to decide what we have to do. And by this, we can change our situation quite quickly. If we are aware of this, if we are uh, moving our capacities uh, and so on and so on. And this is for sure a challenge for the economic situation. May I say the business community is reacting quicker. Beg your pardon being at the political party, but I may say politics is always the last one reacting to reactions. I think the business community is quicker, technology is quicker, and so on and so on. What we have to do by the business community and the responsibility of politicians and of politics we have to move the reaction forwards to be aware of this. The reality of our world is that everything is continental or even global, but we have to learn to be continental, to be global, and it's amidst the process you are. Uh, I think it is not only the question of enlargement of the European Union, I think with enlargement and without enlargement, you are part of this process. You are connected. For sure, I think if you are part of Europe, uh, uh, it might be better and you are closer to, but anyway you have to look at it and you cannot lean back and say, okay, these Europeans are going on. Every, what, what is happening in the European Union has an impact on you. I'll give you one example. Switzerland is, not, Switzerland is not a part of Europe, but they are very much depending on the European Union. That's one of the burden uh, our Swiss friends have. They have to react on this uh, uh, step by step. I think uh, they have to uh, fulfill all the conditions of the European Union being not a member state. Because for sure they are connected by economy, by living conditions and so on and so on. And that's quite the same for you. Uh, in addition concerning uh, membership to the European Union, I want to give you some messages. First of all, what was decided in Thessaloniki 2003, quite a long time, uh, is still valid. I think uh, the decision that the whole region shall become uh, a part of the European Union is still valid. You may remember uh, the comment of Jean-Claude Juncker being the president of the European Commission saying for the next five years no enlargement. I think don't be too much impressed, it is right anyway because none of the possible countries will be prepared to join the European Union within the next five years. But that's also not a reason to lean back and say, oh, five years, it has to go. 
It is a reason that they are doing everything to fulfill the conditions. Because then it's going quicker. It needs even a time. I think Austria was prepared to join the European Union. We need six years to be able to join it, and we had another quality than you have. Uh, so far, I think you have to do it, you have to do it, you have to do it. And that's the next message which I want to give. I think it is a little bit partly private. I met Commissioner Hahn, who is now in charge of this question, and uh, also uh, about the report about Macedonia. Uh, he was going to Athens. You can imagine why he was going to Athens. Uh, and I, I told him, my friend, I'm going to Skopje. What are you telling me? He said, I think the Macedonians should be aware about their reactions uh, concerning this taping, what is existing. The impression in, in Brussels is there's not enough reaction. Nobody is really upset about this. That was his comment. I'm not uh, commenting personally on this, because uh, personally I may say, I know that everything is taped. What I'm saying now is for sure taped everywhere and so on and so on. And I was sometimes considering what are they doing with the taped things. If they have to write it down, it's creating working places. Uh, but what they are doing with the results is another case. But in a certain way, I think you shall react because it's important uh, for the uh, report uh, of the commission uh, about you to keep the role of candidacy which I think has some importance, I think, also for you. I'm stopping concerning European Union and Europe and going to the economic uh, parts. I think I can follow what uh, Minister Bessimi has presented to you. I think what is necessary, you have to define your priorities and to concentrate on this where you are trying to improve and to get it better because we are living all in competition. It's a world of total competition. And there are a lot of possibilities and things can happen. i give you one example. Uh, we all were sure, as a neighbor of Slovakia, I may say it, we all were sure the separation of the Czech Republic and Slovakia will be horrible for Slovakia. They will be bankrupt immediately. Now, they are even a little bit better as Czech Republic. Czech Republic is an old industrialized country but by investment, they got on car industry and so on and so on, they have totally improved. I think so you have to consider on which you are concentrate. You cannot get everything in the world, uh, but what is possible for you, and uh, I was listening here exactly, uh, there are some ways which are possible for you. And also to fulfill the condition. As always, and you will read it in the next report, rule of law. Uh, I think sometimes I'm fed up about this sentence, rule of law, because it's in every report. It is a question on which rule of law is depending. And uh, here I want to elaborate a little bit. It's depending on education. Education is a great importance, and I'm asking you also to concentrate in Macedonia uh, on education. I'm a former minister for science and research. So far, I'm always looking to this, and I'm also involved in some assistance programs. I think for sure you have a lot of universities, but I want to be outspoken. You have a lot of private universities which have not the quality to be a university. I think to be quite straight, hopefully nobody is going to court against me from the private universities, but you have to clean up the situation. You have to clean up that the quality is really existing, because education, in universities, in the school system, is one of the conditions of further development. If you have not enough educated people, they have no chance. You have to concentrate on this subject, extremely important, uh, even creating more exchange. I think you have to use the programs of the European Union in this context, because the future by globalization, internationalization is, that we have to look to working place maybe for two years in this country, for the next three years in another country, and so on and so on. And that's very much depending uh, on the education. I think uh, this uh, movement of labor force is also very much depending in this direction. Uh, it has a great importance, uh, for sure. If I'm looking to my country, and Austria is not, also, is not a big country, I think I compare the situation around 1900 
Vienna has been the second biggest Czech city that was created by the building of Ringstrasse and so on and so on. Brick workers were coming and so. We are now, you might love, the second biggest Serbian city. Uh, this is by the movement of labor force happening here and has a great importance. And uh, until now we were able, I think, to, to manage the whole problem uh, because we have also a lot of uh, Kosovars, Albanians, Macedonians, Bosniaks and so on and so on. And that's for sure quite necessary because I'm the chair of the Medical University of Vienna. Uh, all our doctors are going to Germany and Switzerland because they are better paid. So far the doctors of our neighboring countries are coming to us. That's a normal situation. We have to deal with this situation. I think this is also a kind of unification of Europe. It's not only horrible, which is sometimes said, it is also unification, uh, this exchange. I think if you are looking to the names who are playing in our football crews, uh, here you can see uh, what this unification means. Huh? I think there's an Austrian being a main player in the German football team with the name Alaba, uh, being a black man. Huh? This is a characteristic of our time uh, that has totally changed. And I think you can do it in general with the labor force and with the general situation uh, here. And it is of great importance. Look to the quality of the education. Second point, and it was already mentioned, to be involved in projects. I am involved in some funds and the, the funds of the European Union, IPA for example and so on, have a great importance. And if you are able to join the European Union, uh, you have to join also, also the regional funds. May I say, some of the new member states, I dare to, to drop the names, for example, Romania and Bulgaria, are not able to use the money which is prepared. They are using it with 10, 20 or 30 percent, which for sure is a nonsense. It's extremely important to fight unemployment, to look to this project. What is the reason? Projects are existing. Everybody has a good idea. I think they're in headlines, a long list of projects. But the real problem is to define the project, to develop the projects down in detail, that they are manageable, that they can be done, that has a great importance. It's also connected with education. For example, there's a program, the European Fund of the Balkans. I'm involved there because 25% of the money we are, is coming from Erste Fund, Foundation, which I'm chairing. I think we are trying to train the administration, the younger in the administration, to be able to develop a project, how to handle it. Uh, to be quite open in all your deep respect to your administration, but you have not enough people who are able to handle projects. That's of great importance, and you have to do this training. We are preparing some uh, training at the University of Potsdam that goes to Berlin, and afterwards uh, sending them to different member states of the European Union, to the governments, to the administration, uh, that they are learning uh, how to do. Second important point. Third important point, I think you have to look more to regional cooperation. No one country is able to handle the problems for uh, themselves alone. I think you are depending on regional cooperation. There was an idea like Benelux in the Balkans or whatever, I think you can name it what it want. You have to cooperate with your neighbors. That's one of the main conditions. If you like your neighbors, if you don't like them, you have to cooperate. Uh, because I think uh, you can make a divorce uh, with your wife uh, uh, and so on and so on. You cannot make a divorce to the neighbors. You have the neighbors if you want them, if you don't want them. You have to live with them and you have common problems. I think that's one of the problems. I think as far as I know the Poles, uh, everybody wants to go to the European Union and if I'm looking what is uh, the, the affiliation to the neighbors, it's less. I will tell you maybe a nice story and you might laugh. I'm always very much interested, if we can do it quite soon, to look to the Aerosong contest. The Aerosong contest is a very political event, uh, not by the last Austrian who has won it, that's not a political question. I think uh, Conchita Wurst is not the main thing. Look at the next uh, Aerosong contest. Who is voting for whom in favor? 
And here you can read out that this is very political. Who is in favor of whom? Who has a, a, a near relation and so on and so on? I think we have to do a lot to get closer relations because we have to develop projects cross-border. Uh, Mr. Johannes Hahn was in charge of the regional funds until the last changes of the commission. He told me that out of the huge money of the regional funds, only close to 10% of the money is used for cross-border projects. But cross-border, we have a lot of projects. You know it by your highways, for example. Uh, you are improving on the subject. You know it by the railways. You are not improving on the subject uh, so far, and so on and so on. I think here a lot of things have to be done cross-border. It needs, I think, uh, a very aggressive uh, uh, activity. Next point. It was already mentioned, the Berlin process. Uh, I'm extremely grateful, and we are all, to Angela Merkel uh, last year, year giving a kick, uh, maybe in the back of some governments, to look more to Southeast Europe. First of all, I have to confess, I hate the expression Western Balkans, uh, because neither in history nor in geography you can find this expression. Uh, it is an invention of the European bureaucracy. I think we have Southeast Europe or the Balkans. Uh, that's a better expression, but this is not an important uh, question. But what Angela Merkel did is to create again an attention, attention span uh, on Southeast Europe. Because attention span was existing as long as there were wars or difficulties and so on and so on. Now it was in the, in the years afterwards going down and nobody was looking there. There's a positive side of this situation. May I say, by the analysis of think tanks, uh, you won't believe it, but Southeast Europe is one of the stable parts of Europe. Congratulations. And it is really true that it is a stable part. It's not your feeling. Uh, but for sure, in comparison with other parts, if you are looking to eastern parts, and so it's for sure more stable. But there has to be done more. And that's the role of the Berlin process. The Austrians have overtaken. I'm involved in the preparatory committee. committee. I want to give you a straight message, and I'm saying beg your pardon to the government, but the Macedonian government has, has not already made proposals which shall be discussed. Other governments have already done. Don't be the last one, please. Because it was by basics decided that something concerning infrastructure or activities, even the financing of the economic development and so on and so on should happen, also on the civil society, also on the press freedom and so on and so on. It is an important place happening on the 27th and 28th of August uh, in Vienna, there is a special confer conference on economy where you have to take part. It is only two hours. But in these two hours, I think there should be presented what is the request of Macedonia in relation to the others. And it will be continued next year in France. The French are overtaking. And so far, we have also to define what will be the subject of the next year that we are able uh, here to move forwards. Things are really moving, and that's quite good. Last point I may say, there's a so-called Juncker plan with billions of money. I think for sure, if you're looking exactly where the billions might come, you have to separate there are different sources and so on and so on. But we have to be prepared, and we have to campaign on the subject. In all my love to Macedonia, I may say there's some campaigning done on tourism, if I'm looking to the different TV uh, programs and so on and so on. But I think we need, in general, more campaigning on Macedonia, that the Europeans are aware where Macedonia is, under which conditions, and so on and so on. Please, don't understand it that I'm offending you. I was in charge of campaigning for Austria as we joined the European Union. Personally, I may tell you, I was convinced everybody knows Austria uh, because we have a skiing team and we have Mozart and we have the Salzburg Festival and so on and so on. And at the end of the day, as I was going to Portugal and Spain, nobody knows it exactly uh, where Austria is. If, even if I'm going to the United States, I have always say Austria, not Australia. No kangaroos in my country. Uh, for sure, uh, this is the situation. 
So far, I think you have to do everything to convince the European that you are existing, that you have a capacity to move forward, and that you are doing a contribution uh, to Europe and to the global development. And I think if you are doing this in this activity, I think you are fulfilling all the promises for, for your country, because politics is uh, in charge and the party is in charge of improving the situation. I wish you all the best for it. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank <clears throat> you.